the next session on ANSYS Workbench Tutorials. In this session, we are going to analyze the piston head for its modal analysis. We will try to figure out what are the various natural frequencies at which the piston head is going to vibrate and show a particular amount of deformation. This is necessary so that we can avoid this natural frequency being matched by any other moving part such that resonance can be avoided. So we will start by double clicking on model. We will first go to engineering data, engineering data sources. I'll go to general materials and I'll choose aluminium alloy as the material. I'll go to project and update project. Next, I'll go to geometry and right click. I will import the geometry directly as the model has been made. Next, I'll go to model and double click on it. First, we'll go to geometry and select the name of the geometry. I'll change the material to aluminium alloy. Then I'll go to mesh and I'll change the sizing to fine. And update. This is a tetrahedron type of mesh that has been created. Please be careful with this zone when you are giving an element size because if the size becomes too small, then there can be some interfering surfaces which could lead to obsolete or failed mesh as a message when you run the mesh option. This is generally asked as to why the mesh fails. So this is also one of the reasons of mesh failing when your structure has interfering parts, when meshing becomes difficult or maybe when you give very small mesh size and it becomes difficult to mesh these kind of zones because the length as you can see is very small over here. So these are two main reasons why your mesh fails. You need to be careful with it when you choose the sizing. So once the meshing is done, I will go to model and I will insert fix support on this face and on this face. Apply. Next, I'll go to solution and I'm going to directly solve. You can choose total deformation and then solve. Then what happens is, you know, when you get the solution, you get the first deformation twice or rather I would say the natural frequency appears twice. So that is not required and to avoid that you can directly go for solving. So once the solution is done, you can see here six frequencies have been obtained. These are the six higher natural frequencies of this body. Now, you would wonder how there are six of them. So, you can just go to analysis settings. You would see that by default, the setting for number of modes or max modes to find by ANSYS is six. If you want, you can reduce this or you can increase it. The choice is yours. It actually depends on what type of analysis you want to do. So, once you have created the solution, you can just go to this graph. Select over here, right click, select all, right click, create more shape results. You can see all these results have been created of deformation corresponding to the natural frequencies obtained. So I'll go to solution and solve. Now these are the frequencies. When I click on total deformation, I can see the first deformation over here is 107.48 mm, which means it is 10 centimeter. You can understand what high amount of deformation is going to be involved in this piston head 
if this natural frequency which is 2884.1 hertz is touched so you need to be careful that this natural frequency should not be encountered by the entire system so this is the first one when you go to the second deformation the frequency is 3435.3 hertz and for this you can see the deformation has reduced a bit it is 99.42 mm you can just animate and see because in modal analysis the pattern of vibration is very important so you can see here next i'll go to nodal deformation 3 for this the frequency is 3484.8 hertz and here the deformation has increased a bit it is again 104.32 mm so it has increased from the previous value where it was 99 and if you animate you can see its pattern of motion so this kind of a roll motion has been obtained with the third natural frequency when you go for the fourth natural frequency it is 6130.3 hertz and the maximum deformation is 110.97 mm it has further increased as compared to the previous one we will just animate and see what pattern of motion you're going to get so you can see here this is just a twitching kind of motion so it is just moving up and down next we will go for the frequency for mode 5 the value is 8768.5 hertz you can read it here as well as in this table the amount of deformation has further increased it is 138.14 mm which is 13.8 cm quite a large value you need to be careful we'll just animate and see this is just swaying side to side now and the last deformation is for mode 6 the natural frequency is 9341.6 hertz the deformation is the largest it is 150.6 mm so you can just animate and check the pattern of its motion this is by using aluminium alloy as a material if you change the material the pattern of motion will not change it is going to remain the same but definitely the deformation is going to either increase or decrease and the same applies for the frequency you can just go to analysis settings and change this mode number to 10 go to solution and solve So now you can see the natural frequencies from mode number 7 to 10, 4 more have appeared and they are obviously higher than the ones we have already seen. So suppose if I want to create these total deformation now, just go to this deformation and check here. It is mode number 2. Come to the point 3 and you will see the mode number is 3. When you go to the 4th one, it is 4 which means for every deformation, mode number changes. So suppose if you are analyzing and suddenly you realize that you want to increase or decrease the number of modes. So suppose if you are decreasing the number of modes, you can just delete the total deformation and your work is done. But suppose if you want to increase it, what you can do now is just right click insert deformation total. Just go to this mode and write the number as 7 because 6 has already been created. So now I have created for 7. Similarly, you can do it for 8, 9, and 10. Just go to solution once again and solve. So, frequencies were already created. Now, you can go to total deformation for the seventh mode. And you can get this value of frequency from the table and also here and then you can see the deformation is 227.33 mm so it's further increasing now why i added these four is because i want to show you the pattern of its motion so this is how it is going to vibrate now let's go to the eighth deformation this is a drastic change if you observe the natural frequency is 11247 hertz but the deformation is only 
See the seventh one. It is two twenty seven point three three. This has drastically reduced, and you can just animate and check its pattern. This is how it is going to vibrate. I don't think this we have already seen in any of them. So this is something very new. See the ninth one. Just check its motion. This is very different from what you have seen previously. Here the deformation is maximum one sixty eight point seven three mm. And the natural frequency is eleven thousand eight twenty one hertz. Just check its pattern of vibration. Let's go for the tenth one. This is how it is going to vibrate. I guess you have seen one more like this in one of the deformations. So here the deformation value is three one six point two mm. The frequency is thirteen thousand eight eighty six hertz. So this is how you can just animate for model analysis. Now you can change the material and you can figure out what will be the deformation and natural frequency using any other material of piston head. I am not doing that analysis for you because we have already done a lot of comparative analysis with two or three different materials. What I wanted to show you is these kind of deformations. Generally, we always do model analysis for six of them. Because ANSYS itself gives six as the default value, so without thinking, you directly click on six. But it is also important to know that there can be more than six number of natural frequencies. In fact, it can be many more. So you can have more than ten as well. You just have to increase the number of modes and keep on simulating and observing what will be the total deformation, what would be the frequency at that point, and what will be its pattern of motion, as that is very important. So with this, I end the session. I hope you have understood how to analyze a piston head for its model analysis. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.